Hi there. In today's video, we'll be making a burnt wood stamp text effect on a wood texture like you'd find on plywoods usually. So let's make it in Adobe InDesign. Here in the create a new document pop up, I'm going to create an A3 sized document. I'm going to change my units to points and orientation to landscape before hitting OK. Next in the layers panel, I'm going to double click on layer one and rename it to background. By the way, if you can't find the layers panel, just hit F7 and it shall show. Hit F7 again and it shall hide. So it's basically a toggle switch. Alternatively, you can even go to window and you'll find layers options sitting there. Next, click on the small create a new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel to add another layer. You'll need to add three layers, so double click on this new layer and rename it to smudge. Again, click on the create a new layers button and double click to rename it to type. And click on the create a new layer button one last time and double click to rename it to highlight. So now you should have four layers starting from the top is highlight and then type, then smudge. And the last one is background. So for now, lock the first three layers by clicking on the small area next to the visibility icon or the eye icon. We'll start with the background layer. So with it selected, grab the rectangle frame tool and make a large frame covering the entire artboard. Next, go to file and then place and locate the image from your computer. I'll be inserting a link to this image in the description for you to practice. So if you wish to download it, just follow the link. Now right click on the image and go to fitting and select the full frame proportionately option. I think our image is a little too dark. So let's reduce the opacity to about 90% from the toolbar above. I think I can live with this. Our job in the background layer is done for now. So let's lock the background layer and unlock the type layer. So it's typing time now. So with the type layer selected, go to swatches panel. If you can't see it, it's sitting under window and then color and then swatches. And the shortcut is F5. Now I need to add a few swatches here, but you see the add a new swatch button is grayed out. And it's grayed out because we don't have anything on this layer for us to add a swatch for. So let's grab the text tool and make a text box. And the moment you make a text box, you will find that the add a swatch button becomes active. So now click on it to add a new swatch and a new black copy would appear. So you need to double click on it and then let's rename it to sample one. The color mode is CMYK, but adjust the value. So you need to change the cyan value to 71, magenta to 79, yellow to 66 and black to 92 before hitting OK. We need to add three more swatches or this is something you can do later if you wish to while adding a gradient swatch or let's just add them now. So let's click on the add a new swatch again and rename it to sample two and adjust the CMYK values here as well. So sign should be 26, magenta to be 75, yellow gets 89, and uh, black should sit at 21 and hit OK. Let's do it again and this time rename it to sample 3 and adjust the CMYK again. Cyan should be 8 for this one. Magenta 46. Yellow 42. And black 1. And add one last swatch here and rename it to swatch sample 4. And cyan should be 43 for this one, magenta 65, yellow 48, and black 48 as well. 
And once that's done, you see the burger menu on top. Click on it to reveal a drop down menu and select new gradient swatch option. Let's rename it burn because I can't think of a better name and uh, change the type to radial and then click on this white slider and change the CMYK values to 71 for cyan, magenta gets 79, yellow 66 and black 92. Now click on the black slider which is on the right on the extreme right actually and from here you could use the swatch we made earlier to add the color or manually update the color like we've been doing so from the stop color option I'm going to select CMYK and adjust the values so sign should be 8 for this one magenta should be 46 yellow should be 42 and black 1 now take your cursor to the midpoint of this slider and click once just at the border of the slider and a midpoint slider would appear and the values of CMYK would also get updated as per the location of that slider. So update the CMYK values manually now. So sign should be 26, magenta 75, yellow 89 and black 21 and then you can hit OK. Alright now the boring stuff is over. We made a text box remember so let's add some text to it. So I'm going to type in plywood in two lines so the first line should have ply and then wood for the next line and then change the font to Douglas Calgary. You don't necessarily need to have this font but if you want to use the same font to practice this, I'm going to include a link in the description. You can download this from there. Just don't use it commercially though. Now I'm going to increase the font size to 100 points and then center align it. Next, I'll make another small text box right on top of this one and type in EST 2021, which is established in 2021. And uh, then change the font to the little guy to Douglas Calgary once again. And uh, increase the font size to 18 points and then center align it. Now hold shift and option on a Mac or shift and alt on a PC. And click and drag the smaller text box down to copy it. And then change the text to anything of your choice. I'm going to change it to Indiana. Now ensure that both our smaller texts are center aligned to the bigger one sitting between them. Next I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and make a circle around and then change the stroke to 10 points. And then center align it to the text and make some necessary adjustments for the stamp to look nicer. We need to change the font color to sample 1 we made in the beginning. So let's select each text and the circle as well to change the font color to sample 1. I think earlier it was set to sample 4 by default because that was the last swatch we made. Now select all and right click and group them and make another copy and set it aside to the pasteboard. Now it's time to apply the gradient to each of the elements here. So right click on the stamp and ungroup it. We're going to start with the bigger text here. So select it and change the color to the gradient we made earlier. Similarly, select the text individually and change their color to the gradient as well. And then finally, the color of the circle. If it comes like this, don't worry. Remember we chose the radial option and the right side of the gradient was light in color, which is why this has come out to be so light. So select the circle and uh, using the gradient tool, adjust it so as to have a nice mix of all the three gradient colors we added to the gradient. For a better control of the gradient, go to Window and then Color and then Gradient 
And from here, you can move the slider to adjust the colors. And once happy with the look of the circle, you can hit OK. Now that we've applied the gradient to each element, let's select them all and right click and go to Effects and then Transparency. From the pop-up menu, change the blending mode to Multiply and Opacity to 90%. Now click on the Inner Shadow option on the left and from the settings, change the mode color to CMYK and update the readings for Cyan to 71, Magenta to 79, Yellow to 66, and Black to 92, and hit OK. Now change the distance to 1 mm. You'll find that our default is set to points, so the moment you update the settings to another unit, in this case mm, InDesign does the calculation and gives you the reading in your default unit. Now change the size to 3mm, choke to 25% and noise to 15. Next click on outer glow on the left and then from the settings update the blending mode to normal, opacity to 90 blending color to CMYK and then update the setting to 26 for cyan, magenta 75, yellow 89 and black 21. Then update the size to 5 mm, noise to 25% and uh, spread to 45. Finally, go to Inner Glow option on the left and change the blending mode to Normal, Opacity to 85%, Blending Color to CMYK, and update the setting to 8 for Cyan, Magenta should be 46, Yellow 42, and Black 1. Update the size to 2mm and noise to 25 before hitting OK. Now you see the burn effect is already taking shape. Now all we need is to add some shadows and highlights to our burn effect. So remember we had set aside a copy of our stamp to the paste bolt. It's time to bring it back to the design and place it right on top of the design and once it's on the top of our design, using the right arrow key, push it to the right a bit. Ensure it's just a slight push and don't overdo it because then the spread of the shadow is going to be too much. Now in the layers panel, expand the type layer by clicking on it once and the highlighted group should then be dragged to the create a new layer button and you'll find a copy sitting within that layer. Now unlock the smudge layer and drag the copy you've just made to the smudge layer. Now lock the type layer as we'll be working on the smudge layer for now. Select the group that you copied to the smudge layer and go to object and then effects and then transparency from the pop-up menu, change the blending mode to soft light and hit OK. Now drag this group to create a new layer button to make a copy of it and then unlock the highlight layer and drag the copy to the highlight layer. Lock the smudge layer as we'll be working on the highlight layer now. And with the group in the highlight layer selected, Using the arrow key, move it a little to the left. Again, don't overdo this. We just need a slight move to the left. And then go to Object, Effects, and then Transparency. And from the pop-up menu, change the blending mode to Screen and hit OK. And there you go. The burnt wood stamp effect is ready. 
All right, guys, that's all from me today. I know it was a little tiring today, but hey, it was worth it. So if you've liked the video, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. And uh, also let me know in the comments about your thoughts. Until we meet again on Wednesday, goodbye and thanks for watching.